journey. Gonna get started making supper, so come along. Tonight's supper is ham steak, a cauliflower grits casserole, and fried eggs. So come along, gonna be delicious, guaranteed. So I've microwaved some cauliflower rice from frozen packs of cauliflower rice. I use I prefer to use the frozen uh, because I don't have to worry about it going bad. It's always there for me. I just have and before I use it, I always thaw it out because it just tends to do better. Um, these are the steamable bags, but I really don't want them to steam, so I open the bags up and let the steam kind of come out of them so that it'll help to dry it out a little bit and you won't have as much moisture in there. And I microwave them for uh, roughly seven minutes. Uh, five minutes and then two minutes separating them. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Not much because I believe in letting you salt your own, but with grits, it's you're better off to kind of salt it ahead of time and pepper it ahead of time when at all possible. And it's the same way with uh, doing it with cauliflower. So I'm adding just a touch of each. And this is the Himalayan pink salt. You ever notice how people call it Himalayan pink sea salt? I have not seen a sea anywhere near the Himalayas. And I'm guilty of calling it that myself. So don't know why we do that. You got any idea why we do it? Put a comment down there and let me know. I'm gonna put a little garlic in there. And I love garlic, so maybe it was a tad more than just a little bit. And now I'm going to add a little bit of onion powder. And I, I, when I'm cooking like this, I really don't do measurements. I do what looks right to me. So as far as measurements, it's more or less the taste and I know what we do and what we like. And I go from there and I do it by the way it looks. If it looks like it's right, it looks right. And if it doesn't, I do a little more or something, you know. But I follow the philosophy of uh, you can always add more, but once you put it there, you can't take it away. Now, this isn't just mayonnaise, and I'm using, uh, this is the Chosen brand, Chosen Foods brand that I got at Costco. And that ends it on there. That jar is empty. So, and here I have sour cream. And I'm adding a little bit of it. Now, I might go back and add a little more. Just depends on what it looks like. Now I'm going to stir this up. Until it's well combined. Until it looks like this. Now this was two bags of the cauliflower rice. You can also do a stovetop version of it where it's creamy, where you lose. You, I use a little bit of heavy whipped cream and unflavored uh, almond milk, or you can use milkadamia, milk, macadamia nut milk, whatever you want to call it, um, if you prefer. But that looks pretty good. Now, we won't eat all of this in one sitting, but guess what? I have me some leftovers. And who doesn't like a little bit of leftovers? I'm going to add a little bit more sour cream. Not a lot, just a little bit. I know, my little bit might be a lot to somebody else, but hey, I'm cooking this for me. You cook it the way you want to. I'm just giving you an idea how. If it looks like I'm stirring it out, I have a bad finger. So... It's uh, got some contracture going on and I've got to get it taken care of where it doesn't want to do right. Now that's looking better. So this is ready to go into the um, pan to bake or the uh, baking dish to bake. 
once I add a little bit of cheese to it to mix it up so it'll be a little cheesy. I like who doesn't like a little cheese grits? So we gotta add a little cheese to it. And I prefer to use cheddar. I use the uh, extra sharp cheddar shredded cheese. And let me get the cheese and I'll be right back. So now I've got the cheddar cheese and I'm, I'm Lord forgive me. I, I'm I'm a heathen. I'm using the pre-shredded because basically I don't want to shred tonight. So add a little bit in there because I am going to top it a little bit. And also you want to watch out how much salt you add because that cheese is going to add some salt to it also. Now I could have grated my own cauliflower and made it from scratch like that, but you know. I've tore my knuckles up on that grater more times than I can count. I've done it in the in the uh, blender. I've done it in the food processor. And it's basically just a royal pain in the backside when the frozen tastes just as good as far as I'm concerned. That looks good. That looks really good. So let me get the baking dish and we'll put it in there and get it ready to go in the oven. Well, the corningware dish that I usually use is in the dishwasher, so we're going to use this uh, silicone pan. Is it, if it's silicone, is it still a pan? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to use it, and I can adjust it accordingly. You know, I mean, you basically just want to get it hot. You know, because and let it be bubbling, you know. So we're just getting it in there, and we're gonna spread it out as soon as we get it all in there, and then we're gonna sprinkle a little more cheese on top because it's got to have a little cheesy topping to it. do this just spread it out a little bit now it's going to be a thin layer so that's fine just know that it won't take as long for it to cook so you just get to get at it a little quicker so I'm trying to even it out a little bit so that it'll cook even and not burn so there we go it's all spread out. Okay, let's put a little cheese on top. Whoops. Now, the reason I've got it on a pan, a baking pan also, is these uh, silicone deals, they're pretty flexible. And the last thing I want to do is have that rascal just fall out all over the oven, all over the floor, all over the stove, wherever it happens to want to fall out over. So, because they're very flexible. So, that ought to be enough cheese there. So, we get it that way. Let me clean that up a little bit on that pan. So, it doesn't make a mess. Because uh, Lord knows that pan will not be real good looking with cheese melted all over. So, so that's that's it. It's going to go in a 350 oven. Uh, in the corningware dish, I generally do it 30 to 35 minutes. But since this is a lot shallower, shallower, it's not as deep um, of a pan. Uh, so probably check it about 20 minutes just to make sure it doesn't overcook and basically i just want it hot and bubbly and then i'm going to try and uh brown the cheese on top a little bit uh i will cover it with tinfoil until the end and then i'll pull it out and i'll kind of brown it on top with some uh under the broiler a little bit so we'll do that in just a minute so i've got the oven preheated and I've put in the cauliflower rice for 20 minutes um, now I'm getting the pan ready for putting in the ham steak it's ham steaks already uh, fully cooked 
So really all we've got to do is just uh, get it warm and hot and and all. So I just put a little bit of ghee in there, even though the ham steak, I, I've turned it up so it doesn't have as much fat on it. Um, so I put a little ghee in it just to give it a little flavor and uh, kind of help it a little bit. Uh, even though this pan is non-stick and it does an excellent job of non-stick. It's the Ninja cookware. And I tell you what, this stuff is great. I highly recommend the Ninja cookware. So we'll just wait on this pan to heat up and then we'll put the ham steak in it. So the ham steak's in there. Uh, got the pan preheated and it's in there cooking. And we'll just wait on it and let it get a little cooked on one side and uh, a brown on one side and then we'll turn it over and do the other side and then we'll clean up our pan because there's going to be water in there from the ham, released from the ham. Uh, this is a Smithfield ham that I got at uh, Aldi. It was, uh, you can see I, I cut it up for purposes of fitting in the pan better and also to trim up the fat a little bit. I took the bone out. And I, um, it was less than five bucks for this ham. And I've seen it in other stores for a lot more than that. And so I've seen it also at Lidl. If you've got a Lidl around you, they've all occasionally carried. Now, Aldi doesn't always carry this, so you got to kind of watch out for it and keep your eyes open for it. But it's, it's, it does real good about uh, being much lower priced than... Uh, the other stores around the area. So I have flipped the ham over. There's a lot of water in it, uh, so it's not going to brown necessarily, but it, it, you can see that it has a different color uh, as opposed to, you can see the color difference right there in those two pieces right there after flipping. Um, but, you hear a roar in the background, I apologize for that. That's the fan on the stove so that it will uh, pull away the steam so it won't steam up the camera. And if it has steamed up the camera, I'm very sorry. Hopefully I'll still be able to use this video. I'm just going to let it cook for a little bit on this side. Then we can clean it out, the pan that is, and uh, put our eggs on it. And then soon the uh, off our grits casserole, as I call it, uh, will be done cooking and uh, we can just brown the cheese on the top and it'll be real good. There's the finished product on the grits, the cauliflower grits. I had somebody ask me one time, uh, why do you put so much cheese in grits and other things and butter and salt and whatnot? Well, the facts are, you can't get a starved dog to eat plain grits, much less a person. And same goes with a cauliflower version of it. So you got to kind of make it more appealing to the taste buds. So it's time to fry my eggs up. So we can eat us some supper. Supper's going to be a little late tonight, but that's okay. And I'm going to hope that the yolk don't bust. And it's getting applause. So when you hear it, that means that the pan was hot enough. And I had some ghee in there, of course, like I did before with it. But now I'm going to put this egg in there. And pray it don't break the yolk too, because I want it to be whole. Separate them so that they will come out as egg, one whole egg instead of just one egg, one great big egg. So, last egg. Got 
got a little shell in there it looks like, but I'll pick it out when I need him. No big deal. Turn the flame down just a touch. Not flame. I got an electric oven. And stove. So there's no flame. But I don't want it to cook too fast. And we'll just let it cook for a second or two here. <clears throat> and then to make sure that the top is cooked, we'll put that on there and it'll keep it, they'll steam it kind of and the egg will finish cooking. And then we can top the grits with it and make it look real pretty. So here's our finished results. Uh, time to dig in. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, now it's time for me to eat supper. So my biggest fan and advocate has volunteered to do a taste test and let us know what she thinks. So what you think? Mm. It's really good. The grits. I don't know how you make these the the same consistency as real grits. I mean, it it looks and tastes just like grits to me. Well, thank you. So, there we have it. My wife is satisfied with it, and that just makes it all perfect for me. As long as she's satisfied with it, my day is made. So, love you, darling, and glad. You, thank you for helping me by doing the, doing the taste testing and being the guinea pig. Thank you for cooking it. You're welcome. All righty. Mm. So, that's it for another video from Ketorific Journey. I uh, hope you'll tune in again. Until then, please like and subscribe. And uh, this is Mike here at Ketorific Journey saying thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.